Hey everyone, uh, so in this video we're actually going to talk about how to go ahead and uh, model a funnel. So in this case I actually found one uh, laying around the house and I know one of the big things with actually modeling real life objects is trying to figure out how to get good measurements of these. And since I know not all of you are going to have uh, calipers available, what I chose to do was I actually uh, sketched it out. Um, if you actually, um, so in this case I actually traced it out. Um, at least the top view on a piece of graph paper. I tried to get it as uh, squared up as I could to go ahead and get good measurements. And then from there, I went ahead and sketched out kind of the side view uh, with information that I knew that I had. And uh, where I needed to, I went ahead and used a, um, a ruler. Now you can also, um, you could do this just off of the uh, graph paper itself. Uh, you know the size of the grid depending on what type of uh, notebook paper you've got um, Or of course hopefully a lot of you have the rulers and you can get rough measurements We're not going to get down to the ten thousandths of an inch that we can with calipers But this is more than enough to go ahead and uh, model some real-life objects based on um, some safe assumptions so from there let's talk about how we can go ahead and model this in fusion 360 I'm trying to shy away from Inventor right now because I know many of you um, probably may not be able to go ahead and get it up and running. So we're going to look at a few new tools in this case. Um, pull up some of my notes again. So in particular, we're going to use lofts, planes, and uh, a few geometric constraints. So unlike some of the other videos where I'm trying to skip dimensioning and fully constraining it, um, we will have to use um, some of those tools to be able to use uh, planes and lofts um, effectively. But uh, hopefully this gives you some of the fundamental knowledge of a few more tools and a few more ways of dealing with problems that you may not have uh, seen before. So hopping back into uh, Fusion 360, we're gonna go ahead and start a new sketch and we're going to start off with kind of the cone portion of the, um, the funnel. Uh, we'll deal with this tab a little bit later. So, starting a sketch of the top view, we know that we've got a circle with a uh, outer motor diameter of 1.75 inches. And then for a loft to work, um, we need to have two different sketches. And this is where we're going to go ahead and create a plane parallel to our top view. So an offset plane that says choose the plane that we just drew on the top view. And we can tell that I need it to be below, so negative 1.5 inches. That's one of the dimensions that I use on the, uh, the side view sketch. We then go ahead and create another little circle uh, down below that. And the diameter at that halfway point was 0.5 inches. So we now have two different sketches. We can kind of imagine what it's going to look like. But to create a loft function for this, we're going to actually go under the drop down menu for create, find loft, um, which as you can see can actually change the shape as it transforms from, uh, that it uh, extrudes from one location to another. So in this case, we're going from circle to circle rather than circle to square, but we select the tool. We then zoom in, select the sketch. In this case, I'm starting with the top one, going down to the bottom. So for this one, it's a solid object. Um, this is where we're actually going to use a shell command. Um, I like the shell command rather than doing some of the separate sketches because it lets me go ahead and say that there's a universal thickness to this. So selecting the top plane after I have the shell command selected, we can say that inside thickness is basically 1 16th of an inch. And that will go ahead and hollow out a large portion of this. Now, the problem is it acts more like a cup. Uh, so we actually need to finish making the funnel portion of this. So I'm starting a new sketch on the inside and here I'm going to go ahead and use the projection tool. And we're going to use the projection tool a few more times. So pay attention that P is uh, the projection. And we're going to go ahead and create that innermost circle as a shape that we can then extrude, just hitting E to go ahead and extrude it. And I'm just 
cutting down a little bit click and drag it a little bit or you can use the tools to go ahead and say that it needs to be cut and that goes ahead and hollows out that top portion of that uh, funnel so we now need to create the bottom portion of this funnel and maybe a little hard to see it but it also has kind of its own little slant um, not quite as much as the top funnel but enough that we want to try and model it accurately so we're going to basically go through the same steps okay. so we're going to construct a new offset plane I'm going to do it from the top the full negative three inches down and I can go ahead and create a um, smaller kind of the bottom uh, diameter which was uh, three-eighths of an inch okay. now in this case I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do an offset uh, because I'm already starting to get kind of the cone shapes that we need I don't want to create another uh, cut section so uh, sixteenth of an inch is the thickness that we're working with and then before we create a loft, okay, just because it looks like we've got some of the geometry there, we're going to go ahead and spend a moment to create a new sketch on that plane where we can go ahead and project both the outer and inner rings. Okay. What this allows us to do is it lets us now select, okay, you can kind of see the pink lines in there, uh, purple lines in there, that we can go ahead and grab the loft tool again, select the two different planes and it's not going to look like a lot of slope but we know that it has created a bit of a, a side view okay you can see that it's not just a straight line going downwards so that's created the general shape of the, uh, the funnel but you'll notice that there are two more things that we need to take care of the tab on top and then the little slant on the side so because we've been dealing with planes uh, a fair bit now, uh, we're actually going to do another one of those. Okay? This time, um, we're actually going to um, actually we're going to go back to one of the first sketches, the, um, the outermost the outermost portion of this. And we're actually going to go back and we're going to um, create a point. It's going to be a reference point a little later on. So I want it on the outer perimeter. That's going to be kind of an extreme edge to this model. And we're going to go ahead and geometrically constrain it to the object, okay? Uh, just so that it's always going to stay out at a distant point. Now, going back to where we left off, we can go back and review that sketch and we can see where that point is. And the reason that we do that is to make it a little easier to go ahead and create that offset plane. So we're going to have it as the front view plane. And then we're going to have it offset. And rather than a distance, we're going to tell it to go to an object, in this case, that point that we just placed. So what that allows us to do is when we create a sketch on that plane, we can actually use the line tool um, actually let's uh, project so P for project some of the geometry of the the bottom portion of the funnel so with that information we can anchor it at that bottom point now I'm going to sketch it just a little large just for the sake of having it sketched out on the large side but then we can dimension it for an angle and in this case, we could go back to the sketches we look at. It. But if that's 3 eighths and the height of that was about 3 eighths, we know that we can just set this as a 45 degree angle. And then we'll do another cut extrude to go ahead and chop off the bottom portion of that funnel. So we're getting a little closer. All that's left now is the top plastic edge. Five minutes later. All right. So in the last little section of this, we're now going to go ahead and deal with the uh, the tab portion. Well, tab and kind of the rim. If you actually look closely, there's a bit of a, a rim in there in addition to the tab. So to go ahead and 
take care of this, we're actually going to go back and we're going to create a sketch on the uh, the top plane, um, since that's kind of where we had left off on a large portion of what we created. And then we're actually going to use the projection tool, so P, to go ahead and project the, um, the two rims that we've got. And then we're going to go ahead and offset those, uh, so we know that the full rim is one eighth of an inch. And then we've got the tab to take care of. So to take care of the tab, we're actually going to use the line tool in a few different ways. So the first one is we're going to get this squared up. We're actually going to have a construction line go straight out. Um, let's see, make sure we got that as a construction line. They'll act as a center line. And then we're going to go ahead and start roughly forming the tab itself. So starting on the inner rim, we'll use the trim tool to go ahead and clean this up later. But we'll go ahead and have it go out. We will click and hold to go ahead and create an arc equivalent. And then finish it up roughly placing it. Now this is where we're going to start using some of the geometric constraints. So the symmetry tool will let us go ahead and make sure that it gets squared up against the center point. The dimensioning tool, we know that the thickness of the tab is actually about three-fourths of an inch. So type that in and get it to run. And then we have to address kind of the, the size of this. So bring the center line back a little bit, bring the general object back a little bit. What we know is in our dimensions, we have roughly 5 sixteenths. Okay? That should be good enough for kind of what we need. We're also going to go ahead and create kind of the inner point circle. And for this one, I think, I think a point's going to be a little bit more useful as a, actually no. We'll go ahead and just do a straight circle. We'll take care of some of the dimensioning after that. Um, but we know that this is a 0.25 inch diameter circle. And let's see if we can go ahead and just make this one work. So this should be, uh, check the notes, that one should be about 1 8th. And then we'll go ahead and verify this because we know that if it's that point to the outer rim, that's checking out. So. You'll notice not everything's fully dimensioned. Uh, there's definitely some uh, blue lines that allow us to move around, so it's not quite doing uh, as we expected. And we'll trim a little bit of the mess to make it a little bit more accessible. Finish the sketch. Change back to a home view. Extrude all of the portions that we need. Up. Sixteenth of an inch. And from here, all that's really left is we can go ahead and round over some of the edges and um, basically put a uh, fillet on a good portion of what we've got. Um, would not be a very small one. Um, let's actually just say 0 0.05, which is too much. Uh, 0 0.01 gets a bit closer. Uh, we wouldn't actually necessarily know that, um, but able to go ahead and get it loosely set up. And uh, there you go. There's a fillet. A um, sorry. There's a um, funnel. So a lot of different uh, pieces of information in there. Part of it is the. Uh, using the different planes to go ahead and help draw out your model. Um, other things that we use, the uh, loft command, which is really good when you need to go from one shape to another, um, or from one size to another, and you don't necessarily want to deal with the angles. And um, hopefully you got an idea of how to go ahead and use the project tool if you haven't already. It's a good way of, rather than duplicating your work, um, uh, you having to enter it in, it's a good way to go ahead and let the computer do that for you. So hopefully this helped. Um, I know there's a lot of information in there, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how you can go ahead and model 
real life objects, uh, even ones that seem simple, uh, you, you should see that there's a lot of complexity that can goes into them as well. So thanks for watching and um, let me know what else you might want to see modeled.